And I think that will end my turn. Wow, this deck's actually really fun. See, you can play a newer deck and like it. Yeah, I think I could get used to this. Um, break my board. Well, that one's easy. You just drop sphere without sphere mode. So actually break it. Um, oh, that's easy. I'm a mono water Raigeki, rocket shot. Ah, oh, I hate that card. Raigeki? No, a mono Oguato. That card is so freaking unfair. And getting 50 negates on board before I even start my turn is fair? Well, if this was a real duel, my opponent would have hand traps, though. Even with Ash, Ogre, Baylor, whatever, anyone and their dog with that kind of hand right there would be able to make a good board. I want to meet this dog you're always talking about. Look, what I'm getting at here is do you really hate the card, or are you just angry that some Something exists that can beat you. You know? Nah, that card needs to be banned. Oh my god, dude. And do you think Magic Cylinder would be good in this? No! guys, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a little card known as a Mono Iwato and some of the implications that it may have by just existing. And we're also going to be talking about some cards and things that have happened in the past that have led up to a Mono Iwato being justified and being created. In other words, guys, a Mono Iwato is going to be the main topic of this video, the implications that it may have in the future, as well as cards that you can play against it. And um, we're also going to be talking about whether or not it deserves to be hit on the ban list. But before we get into that, main topic of the video and open up some fan mail. I have to give a huge shout out to all my patrons. Thank you all so much. I mean, I thank you guys all the time, but seriously, I can never thank you enough for all of your love and support. You guys are fantastic. Thank you just so much again. And the other shout out, of course, is to our sponsor, metamats.com, made by us, designed by you. If you guys want 10% off of any map from metamats.com, then enter in the code Eugene versus Jesus, and you will get 10% off of any map that you want. And I have one more shout out, but we're going to be doing it in front of the card wall because I have a map to giveaway. And the winner of this amazing Cyber Dragon Special Edition Cyber Warfare playmat is Gage Palmer, who commented that map looks sweet. It'd be incredible to play Ancient Gears on it just to anger or perhaps even cause the great Yuki Jesus to have a chuckle. And I thought that that took a lot of balls to comment because I am Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus and I play Cyber Dragons. I could throw lightning at your face just for saying mats and you commented it anyway. So, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. All jokes aside though, dude, you really cracked me up with that comment and you won the match. All you have to do is message me with your address so I can get it to you. Congratulations and I'm so sorry to everyone else that entered and stuff, you know, that didn't win a match. It's okay, it's okay. I'm just gonna get more mats to give away to you guys. But until I get more mats to give away, let's get into the main topic of this video, which is the card called Amano Owato. So Amano Owato is a card that has been gaining a lot of notoriety lately because it is a main card played in True Draco. And if you guys are unaware, True Draco is currently probably the best best deck in our current game. If you look at, I mean, it's either it's either True Draco or Pendulums. It depends on how you look at it and stuff, but it's probably True Draco, just because True Draco has the ability to stun out Pendulums, although there are Pendulum FTKs, you know, that, that can be pulled off that, that are also really, really good. Long story short, there are two best decks, guys, are True Draco and Pendulum, and, and I'm, without getting into a ton of detail here, that's all you really need to know, okay? Um, except for Amano Iwato is the, is the kink here, okay? Amano Iwato can only be played really in one of these decks being you know the, the other deck being true Draco we have in other words guys we have a current format to where I'll explain this before we have a lot of variety a lot of variety in our in our current metagame but we have like this one deck in the form of true Draco that is just like it's too good like it, it really is kind of too good um, and the reason why and there, there are several reasons why um, people have named a card of demise which I talked about in my ban list video the other day um, where I announced the you know the Matt giveaway and all that stuff but besides card of demise a card that keeps coming up in discussion to be put on the chopping block is a mono Owato. and see the thing is about a mono Owato, guys is I don't think that it's that big of a problem I think a mono Owato literally is a result of the problem versus it itself being the problem. The reason why is because, I, and I've stated this so many times in the past, I've used this argument a million times now. I've used this argument with kaijus. I've used it with, you know, with uh, cards like, I, I don't know. Long story short, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? And in Yu-Gi-Oh, how that applies is you can't have, you know, crazy, insane, you know, FTKs and decks or just, you know, anything like Pendulum that is super combo-licious and has a very, very high ceiling without expecting something on the other side of that to be able to stop it. It's just that simple. And I've explained in the past at great lengths, you know, why that is. I've explained, you know, uh, players not wanting to play, uh, you know, uh, the su 
super fast meta decks and maybe want to play something a little more slow, something that they can wrap their heads around a little more, you know, more of an anti-meta stun deck. And that is where True Draco comes in, and that is where um, that's where Amano Owato comes in. But guys, um, Amano Owato seriously is it, it is it is just a symptom. It is just a symptom of the actual problem. The problem is the the game is still way too fast. I mean, honestly, guys, we should have expected this. We should have expected this with links. But all of us Yugi tubers, it, it was our fault. We put false hope in everyone's heads. We were like, look, you know, we have we have like th these zones, and we can't, you know, special summon from the extra deck unless zones are opened up. So therefore, um, you know, the link mechanic is kind of floodgating the extra deck, and that was true for like what a week <laughs> or whatever. And then and then we figured out that the game is, is you know super fast. It's, it's gotten even faster. Um, so much so that we literally have an extra monster zone now. You know, four link monsters, and we have like we have six monster zones, guys. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has gotten so fast we, that to the point that we need more room to summon more crap. So because of that, on the other side of the fence, you have to have something to be able to stop that and counter it. In other words, just like in Pepe format and, uh, you know, in the months leading up to Pepe formats um, with Kaijus, uh, and people were complaining about Kaijus and stuff like, oh my gosh, I just got Infinity on the board, you know, and I just spent all my resources setting up this board and my opponent just drops a Gamma Seal on me. Well, yeah, they dropped a game of Seal on you. You can't have 50 negates on board and be like, okay, I win. You, your opponent has to be able to be, you know, to be able to counter and be able to play through that in, att in an attempt to play an actual match of Yu-Gi-Oh. That is, that is the goal. And that's where Amano Iwato kind of falls in here. It's similar. It's very, I compare it. I compare Amano Iwato. Seriously, guys, I, I, I compare it wholly to kaijus and cards like uh, Sphere Mode and Lava Golem and other cards that have come before it um, that are that are um, removal. Um, in other words, guys, I feel like Amano Iwato is a precursor to stronger removal cards like Sphere Mode. Um, and just like how Sphere Mode was, you know, a card that came after cards like, um, you know, uh, kaijus and Lava Golem and stuff, how those were precursors to Sphere Mode. Um, I feel like Amano Iwato is like a precursor to something else, like a stronger monster removal um, and that is just uh, and, and to me you guys are gonna be like whoa that is that's like crazy that's like a conspiracy stuff uh, you're, you're just guessing you're just you know saying that this card is going to exist in the future but you have no facts and I don't have any facts that this supposed you know next Amano Owato is going to exist in the future I have no proof of it okay but if you follow um, how the game has progressed and how crazy the game has gotten and how powerful anti-meta cards have followed suit you know what I mean they followed suit and keeping up with that you can see if you just just like look you can see how Amano Iwato very way may well be just something like you know the precursor to something more powerful and something better and and I think I, I wholly believe that because um, the, the game is gonna keep progressing and keep you know moving forward which it will and so and since it is going to keep moving forward and boards are gonna get you know bigger and you know, the game is gonna keep getting faster and stuff we're gonna get new cards you know more cards more powerful hand traps the game is gonna get faster and faster and faster I this is something that has been happening in Yu-Gi-Oh and there's nothing that you know me or you can do about it but um since that has been happening and is happening currently right now as i am speaking you have to have a card like a mono Iwato to be able to get over said boards that these decks are establishing but i also see the other side of the argument here and you guys might be um on this other side of the argument be watching this video right now and be like yeah we get your points but a mono Iwato itself is 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 hard to stop we still need to be able to stop this thing right because it's just this monster that can be normal summon how do you stop that without you know solid morning or something i I completely get that. I completely get that, okay? But that is where creativity needs to come in. This is where, you know, you know a card like Amano Iwato exists and you know that it's able, you know, that that card enables deck a deck like True Draco to out your boards and beat you. So you need to, you know that that, since you know that that's a card, you know you lose to it, you need to be able to play something against it. And you guys are like, well, what card is that? Because Solemn Warnings at one, what card are you talking about? Well, you need to get creative. I don't know what card that is, but I will say the one card that I was recently informed about is Legacy of Yada Garasu. And Legacy of Yada Garasu is a trap card that says activate one of these effects, draw one card, um, or activate if your opponent controls a face up spirit monster, draw two cards. So in other words, Amano Iwato is a spirit monster. You could flip over Legacy of Yadagarasu and draw two cards. In other words, it's not a direct side against Amano Iwato, but it's something that you could play to try to dig into more cards, you know, and get more advantage over your opponent so you that you can beat them. It's just that simple. And the Legacy of Yadagarasu 
YouTube thing. I didn't come up with that, guys. That was my friend, Sam. That was a fluffle Sam, Sam Cox Yu-Gi-Oh. He came up with that, and I thought that that was really cool. That, 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 you know, I thought that that would be a really cool thing to add into this video. And I also wanted to use that to kind of, uh, you know, prove a point here. Um, just because, you know, there's something that doesn't have, like, an obvious, you know, instant, um, instantly gratifying out doesn't mean that you're not able to look through cards and just think to yourself, you know, maybe you maybe not even just one card, maybe it's like a certain strategy or a way that you can play out cards to where you can play around it. There's there's always a way to play around stuff, guys. And that's something that you just have to learn in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like you have to be able to, you know, look at even your brick hands, right? And just look and be like, okay, I can do at least this instead of being able instead of just you know scooping and dropping your cards that that is what Yu-Gi-Oh is all about so um, in my opinion guys Amano Iwato is just a symptom like I was explaining earlier and, and also not only is it a symptom but I also believe that is a that it is a precursor to something else you know way more broken than we're probably going to get in the future I mean and if you guys think still think I'm crazy and you don't believe that that's going to happen I mean think about uh, cards like you know think about Kaiju's think about Lava Golem. When the, you know, when the Kaijus first came out, did you think that Sphere Mode was going to be made? Probably not. And not only that, did you think that Sphere Mode was going to be played even if it was made? No. <laughs> you, you'd be like, why? What is this? Like, like you, people are unironically playing Sphere Mode even right now, guys. So, in my opinion, Amano Owato, just fine. I don't have any sympathy for people, uh, you know, expecting their, you know, turn one broken boards to sit, stay broken and unbeatable. I don't have any sympathy for those kind of players, guys, because just, just because you open up better than your opponent and your deck was built, you know, that much better than your opponent, you still have to play a Yu-Gi-Oh match. You still have to play a Yu-Gi-Oh match, guys. Your opponent still has, you know, has to have the opportunity to respond and still has to, has to have the opportunity to be able to win. You know, there has to be, you know, that hole in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, no matter what board and, you know, whatever you set up in Yu-Gi-Oh, um, through card design and stuff, Konami needs to always make sure that it doesn't matter, you know, what board you set up, it needs to be played through. Unless, you know, of course there's, there's certain boards that can't be played through. Like, I've seen certain anti-meta, you know, boards, you guys, you know, replays and stuff I've seen on YouTube and, you know, stuff you guys have sent me where you, you just absolutely can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, things like Vanity's Fiend up and Anti-Spell and stuff like that. Okay, besides, you know, boards like that, which happen, you know, one every million games, okay? Uh, besides that, I know it's seriously Konami's job to make sure that, um, that, that through card design and stuff that there's always a gap uh, to be able to play through those style boards. And Konami um, did so with Amano Iwato. They're, 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 that is the gap. I mean, you can't set up these busted, broken pendulum boards with Tornado Dragon, Vortex Dragon, you know, everything else, and, and expect to just win. Like, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't work that way. That's like, I mean, that's literally like playing Solitaire. If you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh and play Solitaire, play Exodia. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Or play Chamber or something like that. If you want to play an actual interactive game of Yu-Gi-Oh, then Amano Iwato is going to have to be a card. And I don't know how else to word that, guys. <laughs> like, I really don't know how else to word that. But um, I hope I got through to you. And um, you know, I don't know. Like, it, just based on this, um, I don't think uh, I don't think that Amano Wado is going to get hit on this next ban list. And honestly, you know, going with my last video, um, that last video really was just kind of like this overall discussion of the format in general. It wasn't really getting into as much detail as this video, for example. Uh, but uh, just thinking back that video and just uh, you know uh, building on that. I don't think Amano Iwato is going to be hit. Um, I don't think a whole lot of uh, things are going to happen on this next ban list at all. I think, honestly, guys, uh, I think there's going to be a couple of adjustments, but for the most part, I don't think anything's going to be touched at all. And in all likelihood, um, after not being touched at all, you know, not anything really being touched at all, um, that's what we're going to be rocking. You know, that's the list we're going to be rocking until Nats. That is my prediction, guys. That is seriously my prediction. Um, and that's my prediction about Amano Iwato is that nothing is going to happen with it. Although, although, um, like, just... Just like any car, though, I will just say one last thing about Amano Iwato, but this is obvious, but I'm going to say it anyways. If Amano Iwato does ever become a problem, you know, an actual, like, look, this thing needs to be banned, 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 then it will be, you know what I mean? But until it actually is justified in being banned, you know, especially because, um, you know, it is, it's a card that helps you out things. It doesn't directly out anything. So in other words, it is a lot more fair, in my opinion, than a card like Sphere Mode that is just... 
um, a one card out to an entire board. So um, in that respect, a mono auto is uh, actually a lot more fair as well, you know what I mean? So uh, long story short, guys, um, to wrap this up, I don't think a mono auto is going to get hits, and I think that this next ban list might be really, really anticlimactic, or it could be super epic and we could have, you know, a crazy nat season. I have no idea, guys. But until that list comes out, let's go ahead and open up some fan mail. This packaging, this doesn't have a name on it, guys, but I'm pretty sure this is from a girl that has since before. And uh, she makes, I'm pretty sure this is, the, I'm not gonna, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna speculate as to who this is from because honestly, guys, I'm terrible, terrible with names. You guys all know that. So I'm not gonna speculate right now as to who this is from. But dude, I know I recognize this packaging though. So if this is from the same person, I'm, I'm just saying I'm not gonna be surprised. But I don't think this is her. I think this is actually someone else. I think I was just like, you know, because the, 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 this other person I was talking about sends and those, 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 that same style of a pink package. But uh, either way, either way. Uh, so dear Yugi No No, uh, Yugi Jesus, I am a big fan of your channel and I live in uh, in the land of Popacorns of, or Indiana, same thing, <laughs> to be honest. I have uh, recently uh, been getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh, even though I haven't been uh, gone long as I took a break around the same time uh, Lynx came out, but I have been playing since uh, late 5Ds era and my uh, first structure deck that I ever bought was the Mas Master Hyperion structure deck or the Dark World structure deck, whichever came first was my first decent deck and uh, not some thrown together cards from a tent. You know what? That's really crazy because that's actually that's actually one of mine too. That's crazy. Um, but when I when I got into uh, when I got into uh, high school, that was actually right about the time. Um after high school where I was starting to get into the game a little bit, I was actually right about that time, I'm pretty sure, I, or uh, maybe a little before, I can't remember, I, really, guys, all that time, all that time frame is like really blended together for me, but anyways, uh, when I got into high school, I made friends with uh, some juniors at the time, they helped me get into a more, uh, into the uh, competitive scene, um, telling me where the local card shop and with tournaments was, um, uh, they also uh, helped me uh, introduce, they also helped introduce me to my favorite archetype of all time, art Artifacts. I ran them before they were cool and before hat was the thing. I ran a pure build and did uh, really good with it. I remember the jokes about the deck being like set five uh, first turn and pass. Anyways, uh, moving on from the nostalgia, I am now in college and need something to take my mind off the stress of school. That's why I play Yu-Gi-Oh now. Uh, still play Yu-Gi-Oh now. Um, and it was uh, got and it, and it has gotten me a couple of friends so far. Well, good. Uh, my hopes. Uh, my hope is that you'll sign my cards in hopes that I will get some Yu-Gi Jesus powers and will be able to top deck that one card I need instead of the one card I seem to get every time. I have also sent some cards from my other favorite card game, Dragon Ball Super. The rarities in that game are a lot cooler looking than most of Yu-Gi-Oh's in my opinion. Uh, you can give your thoughts on camera as I left some to sign and give you uh, two different copies of who I am uh, assuming is your favorite character from the show. As in a video I recently watched, she, you said uh, he was your favorite superhero. Vegeta, the Prince of All Saiyans. Gotta be. Um, if I uh, wrong. I still think uh, you'll enjoy the cards I left for you to keep uh, from that time. Uh, for collecting purposes unless you otherwise would uh, w want to learn to play even though you probably don't have time to. Dude, I mean honestly if I had if I had the time to like if I didn't, you know what, I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna be blunt, okay? If I didn't have a girlfriend, guys, you would get me all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you guys would just have me all the time. Like I would just be yours. But like, nah, I have, I have other things I gotta do, sadly, sadly. Uh, but uh, I also uh, left you uh, some cards you can uh, use to upgrade your rarities for uh, Yugi Kaiba format and GOAT format hopefully. Outside of that, I did uh, send a lot of cards to sign, but I would love to see you sign at least the artifact stuff on camera. If, uh, if it's not too much to ask, no, I can sign them. Oh, and one quick question. Oh yeah, why he's asking uh, why, yeah, why he's asking me specifically to sign on camera is because um, I usually get a lot of cards in the at a time and you know to save a camera battery and stuff. I don't sign everything on camera live. I sign everything off camera before I mail it back, but um, for if if you guys specifically ask me to sign something on camera, I'll sign it on camera. But um, it's just, it's just, I just don't do it for everybody, um, you know, like I used to in the early days of fan mail because it, I just get so much stuff now and it really just racks up in time. But uh, so but so is me talking about it right, right now. But anyways, and uh, one quick question uh, before you look at the cards and sign them. What are your thoughts on upcoming Elemental Lord support and new Element Saver cards coming in of uh, uh, Flames of Destruction? Honestly, dude, I haven't even looked at it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be blunt, guys. A lot of the times... 
I don't have time to, to focus and like look at things coming into the TCG until they're after like in until like a week or like you know when they are already in the TCG like that's usually like I I don't know like, I just like learn things last minute I don't know but um, I hope you um, have a good rest of your day uh, you too and then you and you enjoy the cards I gave you to enjoy uh, sincerely uh, Austin C uh, PS un unbanned my boy Stratos <laughs> PPS I almost dick slapped the dislike button it was so it was close but thankfully it didn't happen PPPS you have all also gotten me on the Cyber Dragon hype, hype train for Cybernetic Horizon. <laughs> another one, boys. Another one. Dude, um, absolutely. I'll sign your stuff and get it right back to you. But let's see uh, let's see what you sent first. Sign. So, hey, 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 yes, dude. Vegeta, the Prince of All Saiyans. I'll absolutely sign all these. Um, you know what? I'll just sign them all. Like, keep, keep. So, you sent me Dragon Ball Super cards. Oh, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards to keep. Uh, hey, hey, hey. I actually have been meaning to pick up Thunder Dragons. Thank you so much. I actually literally was just thinking, like, I was like, hey, I need to pick up Thunder Dragons for my uh, for my goat deck, for my Chaos Goat deck. And oh my gosh, dude, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Mirror Force and La Jin, dude, and uh, Flute of Summoning Dragon. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Vegeta, the proud father, tenacious Vegeta. Thank you so much. Honestly, dude, I'll keep these around just because I like Vegeta and stuff, and I like to keep, you know, everything you guys send me. But um, I, I'm honestly probably never, I mean, unless you get ends or something and I change you know over to another card game um, I'm not I'm just not sure if I'll ever pick up a Dragon Ball Super but um, I will definitely sign oh my god <laughs> they sent me a bunch of stuff to sign dude in a boral load <laughs> He sent me, guys, he sent me a freaking Boral load to sign. This is, the guys, this isn't fake. Like, oh my gosh. He's a freaking madman. He is a madman. Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. A couple Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragons. What is all this? Oh my gosh. Where's the artifact? I was about to say, where's the artifact stuff? There it is. Hey, that is a ulti Durindle. That is pretty sweet. I gotta be careful with this stuff, guys. This stuff's really, really cool. That was, a, that was a, I'm pretty sure that was the first dead ulti Durindle. Um, oh man, Return of the Dragon Lords, really, really sweet. What else we got here? What else we have here? Uh, we have, uh, there we go, there's the Moral Talk and the Artifact Ignitions. Dude, I will definitely sign all these for you. Matter of fact, uh, let me sign all these for you on camera really quick, and, and I will uh, put it on fast forward or something. All right, it took me a second to notice the sign on both sides notes he had on these uh, on some of these, but these are really cool. No, I do dig the full art cards on a lot of uh, different card games, but I, I don't know. I don't feel like Yu-Gi-Oh should ever have full art, but that's just my opinion. But I do think that the Dragon Ball Super cards do look really cool, and I think a lot of the full art Pokemon cards do look really cool. But uh, dude, uh, yeah, it took me a second to, <laughs> to notice the sign on both sides, uh, but I got them signed on both sides for you. Thank you so 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 much. Well, not that one, but the ones that are double sided, like uh, not that one either <laughs> which ones which ones are the double-sided ones that one yeah yeah these ones that are double-sided I signed for you double-sided but uh, thank you uh, so so much for writing again dude and thank you so much for sending cards you got you you are freaking awesome thank you so much mm. <laughs> <laughs>